Welcome to Pinball Mayhem. Today I'd like to uh, show you how to make ball guides for your homebrew pinball machine. Now uh, some of you may be following Jack Danger. He is uh, going through documenting all of his steps for making a ball guide. And I thought this might be helpful to him and you guys as well and give you a little bit of suggestions keep you on track. Save you from learning from where I did. So first thing I want to show you this is the wooden side and also I'm using it as my uh, divider between the, uh, the the shooter lane. Some newer games or some games will have sheet metal or a thinner, uh, more of a ball guide there to save space to have an extra lane but I'm going more with the half inch. This is half inch wide and the tall is one and an eighth inch tall and uh, to get it I just went to a woodworker with a plane and said hey could you cut down some hardwood and uh, just run it through your plane until it meets those dimensions. Now, I asked enough for uh, two games so uh, about two four foot pieces and plus a two foot scrap and he gave me enough for about three games because just they can use up their scrap they they don't mind doing that <laughs> if you if you got a, a friendly rapport with them so these are the ball guides a little bit harder when I first started making them uh, I was trying to bend cut tabs and bend them down uh, it's kind of, and uh, that's just more of a mess it's hard to get the the screw the the line up underneath and it, it just looks kind of ugly these are out of a 16 gauge stainless and I know some people even like to go 14 gauge stainless and you see there's just a rivet there and a, a couple of rivets so I, I do have to drill a hole through the through the board and have a nut on the bottom there are some spots that get a little beat, beat up you can always throw a washer underneath the rail uh, to keep it from sucking down to the cheap wood that doesn't uh, have any uh, clear coat on it. Let's move over to the bench. Over here we have uh, pretty much tools we're going to need to make those. What uh, I did when I made my first set of ball guides is I just took sheet metal. Uh, this is thin, thinner than I needed, probably more like a 20 gauge, and I cut it to about an inch and eighth tall. You can see it's not perfect, it's, but it's something for my first version. So when you saw some of the earlier videos when I started making the ball guides, this is what I had. It's out of a fridge which I put new panels in. Uh, I'm going to be drilling on this today because I um, don't want to ruin my other metal. So what I did is I, I called up a local metal shop and I said I need uh, stainless steel, brushed stainless, uh, that's a 16 gauge. Uh, this one's brushed the wrong way unfortunately. Normally you go a long way. I didn't specify that the first time. 16 gauge and I need an inch and an eighth tall. And that's all I did. And they told me uh, two pieces of four foot long. I think it cost me like 10-15 bucks. I was able to pick it up the next day. So keep in mind uh, local resources and metal shops. Any anybody that has industry, you have to have metal. You have to have repair shops. They're going to be able to do this. You don't have to ship them. You don't have to buy them online. You don't have to know the length. So this is all I started with for all my ball guides, and it's the right length, right height, nice sheer cut, not sharp. You can always file it if you have to. Um, on my final ones, to to put my ball guides down, I am using offset spades bought these from Pinball Life and it's called Offset. I got an idea. Alright, it's really hard to see the divot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the divot with a sharpie. Now can you see the divot? Yeah, that's pretty good. So that divot is what the, the ledge of this is going to rest on. So for instance I want it. It's not resting, resting on it because it's a very small, but that's kind of a lineup line. So the rest of this is going to go down to the board. If I'm too low, it's, it could rip out here. If I'm too high, it, it's going to pull down on the, the board too much. That little bit of wedge in here is going to help kind of wedge it into the play field. So um, I'm going to put this off the side. We're going to be drilling. Now I have, I made a homemade press out of a, a Harbor Freight for a, uh, for rivets, uh, if you, the, I'm going to use hollow point rivets, nickel plated for my final, for any preliminary, I think these are the ones I used. That should be good. Alright. So that's the hollow point rivet that requires special dies to press. Um, they are available, but kind of getting hard to find. Pencil. So. What I'm going to do is to make my habit trail, I would put this on the play field and I mark where I want my holes. You could either uh, you can either uh, mark 
So let's say this is a hole right here. If I drill the hole first, I can mark where I want my 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 post to be. And of course, wherever I put it, it's keep in mind it's offset, so it's got to be on one side of the hole when I'm marking them. Um, <clears throat> you can you can do do the holes afterwards, but I find it's better to drill the holes in the play field, mark out where you want uh, first, and you can kind of bend this to the shape. This is more flexible than than of course the the stainless steel is. So now that's marked, I got a vertical line where I want to go. I'm going to find that lip which I marked with black and I'm going to mark my hole. That's where that's where I need to, to, to drill a hole in the habit trail. Take an eighth inch drill bit and try to center now. It's a drill. They can walk on you. And uh, if they do walk on you, just keep in mind a brand new sharp drill bit. You buy a buy a nice eighth inch drill bit before you get started. You're not you're gonna have a lot less walking issues. Now, I forgot to get a file, so I'm gonna run a file. It's always nice to have a metal file in hand. Now, if it's the backside uh, that you're drilling on, that's okay because you're gonna you're gonna scratch it up when you file it. I would try to go with the grain. That way I was kind of just taking off the bottom edge. Always good to have a, a, a small metal file around your shop if you're building. So uh, if I, this is my final stainless steel. Uh, those tubular rivets we showed you are a little pricey. They can, uh, they, they, can get, they can get pricey over time. So you don't want to use them for disposable. For, so for my disposable ones I use eighth inch uh, aluminum rivets. And go steel. You don't want to have the rivet too big. These are just kind of a mismatch I have. So the side that's, oh, I filed it shut. So I'm just going to hit it with a drill again just to make sure it fits. We don't want it too loose. We don't want to sit there and ream it out. So I'm going to put the offset rivet with the flat side towards the metal. Now this is the side the ball is going to hit. And of course the rivet is low and you're like, you know, that's going to, no, the ball's not going to hit it. It's round. So we're good. <clears throat> and pop the rivet tool. Not the best rivet tool in the world. We'll squish the rivet. And now that is ready to go into the play field. Uh, I always always use a nylock and a washer. That's one of those things uh, when you when you go into the hardware store when you're when you're when you're building a game, buy a lot of hardware. These are the sheet metal screws, 3 eighths. I buy these by the box of 100, they're about 5 bucks a box. Ask at the hardware store, they'll sell them to you by the box. I got 3 eighths and I got 1 half. If you're building a pinball machine, before you get started, buy about 2 boxes of each. Okay. So yeah, you're going to use a lot. I use the half inch for mechanisms, I use the uh, 3 eighths more for like uh, straps to hold wires on, uh, light bulbs, things like that. Hardware I have available. I buy number six nylocks by the box. You can get them at most of the box stores. You can get them in large boxes. And while I have you looking at nylocks, I'm going to show you a quick free trip tip. So some Bally games shipped with, we're going to go over to the pinball machine for this. Da -da -da, over here. Some Bally games shipped with purple cap nylocks and sometimes the nylocks that didn't have this little rubber cap the through ones were purple well I have a few of those in the box these are original from uh, some old uh, game I worked on I'm like I wanted if I want purple nylocks what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make them purple with a sharpie my first painting it red and then guess what I'm going to put a little blue on there. If I don't like the color, if it's a little bit too blue-purple, I can go back to red. There you go. Now i got a purple nylock nut. It's not as white as the white ones. Kind of gives a different old-school look. I know I'm going to eventually do all of them on my game. Thank you for watching. If you like this, keep an eye out for more. Uh, how to build little segments on Pinball Mayhem.